Welcome to the Web Basics series. Today I'll be talking about how to communicate with your developer. This video is brought to you by Enfira Web Design and Development. Let's get started. First of all, who is this video for? This is for business owners who are trying to work with their developer, agencies who are trying to outsource development work, and anyone who is mystified by how on earth you communicate with a developer. So why am I doing this video? Because you and your developer usually speak a different language. Really. You speak two different languages with very, very different vocabularies. When you say tab, that has a very specific meaning to a developer. Whereas for you, that may mean the main menu. For a developer, it actually means something very different. So if you actually want to get something done, you'll need to communicate in a way that your developer can understand you. Most developers want really straightforward instructions without any ambiguity. However, most clients tend to give very ambiguous instructions. This is where the problem comes in. You as a client know exactly what you mean. However, you haven't conveyed it in a way that your developer can understand it. For example, this is an actual request that I got. The text color is too light. Well, I had literally just sent over a website to this client to review and it had about 30 pages on it. And there were a number of different text colors on a number of different pages. Any individual page probably had four or five different text colors on it between the color used for the menu, the main text, the headings, the footer. There were a lot of different colors. So I had no idea what they meant by the text color is too light. Whereas if they had given me a specific URL and said this specific block of text is too light, and they gave me an idea of how light that too light was, then I would have some idea of what they meant and how to help them. So here are some tips to make it easier on everyone. The first one, always include your URL. Not the name of the page or how you might refer to the page, but the actual URL. For example, some sites have both an about us which is about the company and also an about an individual. So when you say the about page, we don't know which page you mean. Also, most developers have a lot of different websites and they don't always remember exactly which pages you have at any given moment. So always include your URL. If you're reporting an error, always be sure to include what browser what device and what operating system you are using. For example, you might be using Google Chrome on an iPad using iOS 9. That is nice and specific. Also be specific about where the error happened. Did it happen when you pressed a button? And also be sure to include what you expected to have happened. Because sometimes what you are reporting as an error is actually the way it was designed. So you need to be clear about what error you perceived as well as what you expected to have happen. The golden rule on errors, if your developer can't reproduce it, your developer can't fix it. So always make sure that you have given clear instructions on how to reproduce your errors. Also, always be very specific about where on the page you want something changed. For example, if you want some text to be deleted or modified, it's best if you actually quote the text that you want deleted or modified. That way your developer understands exactly what you want done. Include screen captures. 
there are lots of desktop tools and browser extensions to help you take screen captures, especially, for example, if you're using Chrome. Lots of great tools there. If you take a screen capture and then do a little markup on it, even something as simple as just putting an arrow to point at the item that you want changed, that is incredibly valuable in communication. If you want to take it up a notch, do a screen recording. There are a number of tools, both free and paid, for doing short screen recordings. And one of the most important things is to be nice. Your developer may be returning your email because things aren't clear. Don't get upset with your developer. They're trying to help you. They're trying to do what you've asked them to do, but they need more clarification. So remember, just say please and thank you and have a little patience and everyone will communicate a bit better. It's also important to understand that there are limitations to what your developer can do. For example, we as developers have absolutely no control over your monitor settings. So on your iPad, the color may look one way, whereas on your desktop, it may look completely different. That's the monitor settings, and there's really nothing we can do about that. I once had about two weeks of going round and round with different colors of orange for a client to eventually get back to the exact same orange that we started with. And what it came down to was her individual monitor had strange settings for colors. And so while something looked one way on her phone, it looked differently on her desktop. The problem was the settings on the desktop. Another example is fonts. Fonts render differently in different browsers. They render differently in Microsoft Word. They render differently in Adobe Photoshop. So what this means is that spacing will change slightly between browsers. So this line ending might be in a different place if I was using a different font renderer. And also how a font looks can change. For example, in some browsers, bold for a given font will look different from bold in another browser. Nothing we can do about that. And then there are individual browser settings and preferences. A user can set up a number of different preferences on their browser, which will override the website's design settings. There's nothing we can do. So here's an example of a good edit request. I want my blog post, and they've given the URL, updated to have a featured image. Please go to Unsplash and find an image of fresh apples to add. Please make sure that the featured image is the same size as the featured image on this other URL. Thanks. So you've seen that they use please and thanks. They have used specific URLs. They have said specifically what they want done, which is add an image, where they want the image to be added, the featured image, how on earth the developer is supposed to go get this image. They're supposed to go to Unsplash and look for an Apple image, and also what size the image should be. This is very specific and should get your request taken care of very quickly. So, thanks for watching. More videos are available here on the YouTube channel, and you can also visit our blog for more articles and tutorials.